Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the specific case of projectile motion for objects launched at an angle. So let's get started. Now it says here that when we are dealing with objects launched at an angle to the horizontal, again, we must treat the horizontal and vertical motion separately, just like for objects launched horizontally. Equations of motion can be used when solving problems. So using SUVAT along with the equations of motion is going to be the go-to method for solving these problems. So what do we mean by objects launched at an angle? Well, I'll just show you a quick animation to help you visualize this. So imagine you've got a cannon launching a cannonball at 50 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. So there's the horizontal and the cannonball will be launched at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to that at 50 meters per second. So if we click play here, you'll see the clear projectile motion. So we're now looking at this kind of motion where we've got the full parabola of the projectile rather than just say half of it because for the objects projected horizontally, all we were looking at for that kind of motion was going from about halfway through the motion here to the end of the motion. So we're now looking at the full motion of a projectile. So it says here that the projectile reaches its maximum height when it has traveled a horizontal distance equal to half its range. So if we imagine this picture here with the American footballer kicking the American football at an angle, then halfway through its motion, it's going to have reached its maximum height. And at this point, the ball has traveled half its range because its full range would be all the way along to where the ball hits the ground. It then says that the time taken for the projectile to reach its maximum height is half the total time of flight. And that's because it's going to take the full time to get from here all the way to here. But we're saying that to get to its maximum height over here, it's going to take half that time. So like we said in the theory video for the object it's projected vertically upwards, we can use the idea that half of the full projectile motion will take half of the total time of flight. And lastly, it says here that a very important point that at maximum height, the vertical component of the final velocity V subscript V is zero meters per second. So when the ball reaches halfway through its motion at this point, it is going to reach zero meters per second. And therefore, when we're doing questions involving full projectile motion, where an object is launched at an angle, then we can use this idea that the final vertical velocity is always going to be zero meters per second halfway along its motion because that way we can simplify our motion into two identical halves where this motion would take a certain time and this motion would take the same time to reach the ground. We would therefore have an initial vertical and horizontal velocity from here and a final vertical velocity of zero at this point. Now for this specific case when we think about the initial velocity of the projectile it's not going to be as easy as what we've seen previously. It says here that since the object is projected at an angle we must resolve its initial velocity vector into horizontal and vertical components. We do this in the exact same way as we did for forces. So you should remember that we resolved force vectors into their horizontal and vertical components. And we're going to do the exact same for the initial velocity now. So you're more often than not going to see an object projected with some velocity, say u, at an angle to the horizontal of theta. And you're likely to be given in a question an actual value of the angle theta. And in order to do problems, we either need to work out where the horizontal component is, or the vertical component is, or both. So we can use Sokotoa to get the two components. So for this one over here, if we did cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, then that means we could rearrange for this component to get uh equals u cos theta, where uh is just your horizontal component. And we could do a similar thing for the vertical component using sine this time. It's sine theta equals opposite over the hypotenuse and rearranging for the vertical component here, which we could then move over to this point here, we could get uv equals u sine theta, where uv is just your subscript for the vertical component of the initial velocity. And remember, like we said for forces, a way to remember which one is cosine and which one is sine is that cos goes across and then sine is going to be the other one, the vertical one. So that means we have two expressions for the horizontal and vertical components for the initial velocity of a projectile launched at an angle. So to find a horizontal component, we use uh equals u cos theta. And to find the vertical component, we use uv equals u sine theta. Note that you don't get these on the relationship sheet in the exam, so you need to remember them. Lastly, it says to note that the angle that the object makes with the horizontal when it lands is the same as the launch angle theta. So this angle that the projectile makes with the horizontal as it's launched is going to be the exact same as the angle that the projectile makes as it lands. And a way of seeing this, if we go back to our animation, here we were launching at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal, and we're saying that this angle in here is also going to be 45 degrees with respect to this horizontal. And that's because the second half of the motion is going to mirror the first half of the motion. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure you give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.